And it's the people who will decide the result of the election in every constituency. Their local champions, their national champions. Friends, this election will be about change. But it's not the change in the way that the others talk about it. Labour or Tory, Tory or Labour, their agenda is the same. They are both cut from the same cloth, part of the same system, a metropolitan machine that has let us down. And yes, the people are raging against that machine. This time on polling day, people won't just vote for another politician. That much is clear. They're looking for more, much more than that. They are looking to elect a champion, local and national champions. That is the big change, the real change in this election. That is the new people power. And friends, it can be in this election the power of Scotland. There is a film on release at the moment, and Alice Matt Lucas uh, plays the characters Tweedledum and Tweedledee. It's well worth a look. Tweedledum, Tweedledee, two peas in the same pod. I know what that reminds me of. Tory and Labour, Gordon or David, Tweedledum or Tweedledee, even in 3D, the agenda is the same. Big cuts, savage cuts. Cuts next year and then every year. Cuts that would go deep into Scotland's budget and hit hard the services on which all of us rely. Cuts that would choke off recovery and threaten thousands of jobs. Cuts at the wrong time. Cuts on the wrong things. The debate between Labour and Tory is a phony war. The extent of the, the debate, the extent of the parameters of the debate in this election between the Labour and Tory parties is whether the big cuts programme that they share should start this year or next year. Meanwhile, other major economies, in fact all of the major economies, are not cutting their maintaining economic recovery programmes through 2010. The United Kingdom is the only, the only G7 member to cut spending to withdraw fiscal stimulus this coming year. It's the wrong approach, it's the wrong choice. If our economy is now turning the corner, with recovery in sight for the sake of jobs, for the sake of our communities, we can't, we won't let the London parties put a break on Scottish recovery. <laughs> Friends, the, the recent death of Michael Foote, like Billy Wolfe, uh, another politician of principle and passion, brought to mind, to me, one of Michael Foote's most memorable speeches. He recalled once in the Commons as a child being taken to see a, a music hall conjurer. The, the conjurer took a, a splendid gold watch from a member of the audience, smashed it to bits, and then announced, I've forgotten the rest of the trick. <laughs> now, Michael Foote in that speech compared that conjurer to the economic policy of the Thatcher government. In these dark days of Tory recession, Michael Foote was spot on. The Tory response left communities devastated and a generation of Scots out in the cold. Today, it is both Tory and Labour who have forgotten the rest of the trick. And they have forgotten the lessons of the past. Friends, these times, these choices are crucial for our nation. Crucial for Scottish families, for the people we represent. For the sake of jobs, for the sake of these communities, stimulus must be followed through. We can't let Labour or Tory stop Scottish recovery because the decisions taken today will affect the prosperity of tomorrow. Earlier this week I had the, the privilege of announcing the latest Crown Estates round of offshore renewable energy leases. Friends, these leases were for the Pentland Firth, the Saudi Arabia of marine renewables. Are first in the world. We are first in the world. We lead the world for tidal and wave power. And in these 10 projects alone, there is the potential to generate 1.2 gigawatts of power, enough to power 700,000 homes across Scotland. And that's only the beginning of this adventure. The prize and offer to Scotland is enormous. The economic potential and jobs and exports and expertise of all our marine renewables is as great 
as North Sea Oil and Gas. And therefore, I'm delighted to announce today the Scottish Government is setting up a new £12 million marine renewable fund, a fund to support the development and deployment of technologies that will turn Scotland's vast green energy potential into tens of thousands of green energy jobs and billions of green energy wealth. It's a case, delegates, of the Scottish National Party investing in Scotland's success and Scotland's future. But friends, the uh, money for this fund is available today because we are doing all that we can to direct resources towards jobs, recovery and to the front line. It is money that is available this year but will provide a return, a huge return, for many, many years to come. And it's exactly the sort of project that we need to protect, that we need to invest in, because this is exactly the sort of investment that is threatened by London cuts. Now, we can't let the Tory or Labour parties close off the path, not just to recovery in the short term, but to the future prosperity of the nation. That is why this election is so important, and that is why Scotland's voice must be heard. <laughs> and just as we must stop the London parties, preventing investment in the industries of the future. So we mustn't let their cuts smash what is precious in public services, destroy what all of us hold dear. And let's have no doubt, public services like the National Health Service are part of who we are. They are part of the fabric of this nation. A few weeks ago, I opened the new Stop Hill Hospital in Glasgow. It's a magnificent new facility of a wonderful, dedicated range of staff. It is a jewel in the crown of uh, Scotland's National Health Service. And that's just not my view. That was, uh, when I was there, I met uh, John Ro Morrison. John Morrison is 97 years young. He was a minor at Ochengi Colliery. He was actually part of the rescue effort when tragedy struck that mine in that community half a century ago. John went down the pit at 13, he had a trial for heart at Lovian at 17, he went to university in his 70s. So John has uh, seen a bit of life, and he's a big fan of Nicholas, incidentally. <laughs> so Peter, you better watch out. <laughs> and John Morrison said to me that what everyone, what all of us, what every generation, and the new generation has to understand is the importance of having an outstanding health service. He was pointing out for almost half of his life that wasn't the position. And delegates, we have an outstanding national health service in Scotland. And friends, since we took office, we've been investing not only in the best, most modern health facilities, we've been investing in what matters, the frontline staff. More doctors, more nurses, more dentists, 2,000 more, 2,000 more since May 2007. They are the reason why people like John Morrison praise Scotland's National Health Service. That is what is precious, it's what's important, and that's what they must be valued and what must be protected. We are part of all that we experience, and today that's what makes our nation the community it is, a community of which we can be proud, a community and a Scotland we must protect. Friends, there's another person I'd like to praise when we're talking about the National Health Service, our Deputy Leader, our Deputy First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Now, our friends in the press say that Nicola has too much compassion. I say, better a politician with too much compassion than one with too little compassion. Yeah. 